What's going on, everybody? I am John Stamper, founder of JRS4 Media, and I wanted to take a couple of minutes to um, talk about something that is near and dear to my heart, but then also connect some dots with a gentleman that I just recently met. And interestingly enough, uh, when you learn about uh, what William and his team at Howling Amplifier are doing, it was kind of like this missing piece, I think you could say, for a lot of the passion that I have for video production and sharing people's stories and that. So we thought we'd have a little sit down and talk a little bit about what he does, what I do, and I think more importantly, how we're excited about what we can do together to help you as a company, as a business, as an individual that wants to get your word out, um, out to social media with the things that we're helping people with. So William Shemensky from Howling Amplify. How are you doing, William? I'm well, John. Thank you for having me on with you. I'm super excited to be here. All right. So here, here's where I'm going to start. Uh, video production, like I mentioned, uh, is something that I'm very passionate about. And I feel like it's something that I know I've been speaking with to people for a long time. I feel like finally companies, individuals are seeing the value of video. Uh, you're going to share some stats with everybody. That's what you do. You've got these statistics of like what works on social media, what works on the marketing side. So I'm excited for everybody to hear that. But there's two elements that I've learned. Number one is that, uh, you know, a company's marketing team goes to them and says, hey, you know, we want to get the message out. We need more video content. And they're like, okay, well, we have, we have things here and there, maybe a, a video for our website, but you need more like where we're going to get it. So that's typically like one pain point. The second pain point is the other side. Somebody has video content, but then what do you do with it? You know, you got 10, 15, 20, 30 pieces of content sitting in a folder and it's not getting out to the audience. And I know that's something that you focus on. Uh, so let's start there. Yeah, and and you know, I I, I don't want to minimize the video content. Uh, I, I really want to focus in on that right now on all platforms, on most communication platforms. Video is king. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality is, we're being messaged to, marketed to, from morning until we go to sleep. Thousands of messages. Graphics are simply not enough. Yeah. It's about telling a story and telling a story in such a way that A, grabs my attention within a few seconds and then retains my attention where I'm curious enough to continue to look for more. Yeah. And, and the challenge that we've seen in, in most businesses that we start working with is that they may know they need content. However, they don't have the right type of content. Right. Um, they don't understand the strategy or how best to implement that. And that's a struggle for us because now we're left to try to create this valuable content. And it's valuable. It's the most valuable thing that you can do, asset that you have for your company right now is this these videos. And so it's a challenge for us. So trying to find a partner that like I said, I don't want to oversimplify it. This yeah. isn't, you're not, it's not just a video yeah. production. Yeah. There's a strategy and a level of, of understanding of processes and emotions and psychology on how to develop and edit the message to get the action, the, the action that we want. So from our perspective, the video right away, we're trying to find that solution to make sure that we have that understanding. Now, working with partners like you, I mean, this is a dream come true because you're handing us amazing filet mignon on a platter of content, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I got to tell you, very hard to do and rare to find. Yeah. Everybody, a lot of so-called experts, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that know how to use Adobe Photoshop also that call right. themselves graphic designers. Right, right. With what you're able to provide us, this type of content or any video content, it doesn't have to be. I, I want to make sure that we understand it's about getting the video. Right. It's not about perfection. Right. It's right. not about polishing and editing. And sometimes right. the videos that are just off the cuff, yeah. good raw videos get the most momentum. Yep. But now we're able to take that video and using AI technology, and I'm not saying the stuff that just came out recently that it's the new hype, it's the new shiny object. 
Our agency has been working with AI for well over a decade, true AI in most of our campaigns. And so with that understanding, we're now able to take that content, run it through our AI technologies, and know how to edit it, know how to take out the excerpts, know and give and get a predictive score. Literally, we can create a clip and understand how that clip is going to perform yeah. before it even goes out. Mm -hmm. And so using that type of technology and the strategies that are implemented, now we have great content. Mm -hmm. We're understanding how to edit it to create that message because a video, the gold is in the editing. The right. storytelling is right. in the editing. It's not right. the stuff that we, you right. and I do. It's what right. the guys behind the camera do, right? Right, right, right. So, Based on that, we're able to provide a tool to our editors, provide a tool to, 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 to our team where we're not just guessing, oh, this sounds good. Yeah, it sounds good. It reads well. And we have a score. Mm -hmm. From there, we're able to take now that optimized content and we run it through an amplification engine. And this is where the magic happens because great content, optimized. Yes, it scores well but it does nothing if it's not seen. Right. Goes into a dead space, and that's what happens with a lot of content. So understanding how to amplify that content, understanding the, the, the algorithms and how often you're posting and how to, how to test that content to ensure that you're getting engagement and impact, that's where AI and, and what a team of experts that understand, because we focus on healthcare and, and those compliance-driven mm -hmm. uh, uh, industries. So compliance is huge. And, and so that's what we're able to do, create, to take that content, uh, 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 amplify it, and, and, and really get impact. You know, it's interesting, uh, you know, a book I read some time ago by Malcolm Gladwell talks about the 10,000-hour rule. And any professional that's trying to master their craft, uh, you know, minimum of 10,000 hours. And hearing you talk about where we are now on the AI side, on the Amplify side, meaning being able to put a bunch of content out there and ultimately, you know, see what the audience is engaging with in an effort to be able to give you direction on what you should continue to put out there. Yeah. And but what's interesting about that is you can't get to that point, like you said, unless you have a lot of reps, unless you have a lot of content. And it, it's very refreshing, uh, William, when I get a chance to sit down with, with somebody that we do work for and say, okay, they're like, well, how are we going to get this content? And you say to them, let's start with a 20-minute conversation, kind of like what you and I are having right now. Sure. And from that conversation, uh, a lot of things are going to be discussed. We could get 5, 8, 10, 12 pieces of individual content from just that one conversation. So I think what's exciting is that knowing that that's possible from the video editing side, and then what you mentioned, then taking that individual content, now you have something to work with and put out there, see what works and what doesn't work. And, you know, in the past, you think about it, like when a company would do a marketing campaign, they would put hours up front into like one piece or one video that got dropped and then they would wait for like the feedback there. And I think what's so exciting with where we're at right now, if you can buy into it, is that if you're okay with putting stuff all over the place and seeing what the audience says and then being able to adjust, I think not only is that fun, but I also think, and you tell me, you get to the answer of what your audience wants a lot quicker. Uh, and, and the reason I'm, I'm smiling is, you know, I remember those days, you know, you and I have been around uh, probably since people were debating whether Facebook was important or not. Yes, I yes. remember those days in actual, actual brick and mortar agency experience, which is, is, you know, not a lot from, from, from what I'm seeing now. But, you know, w with the technology, you're hundred percent right. What we save in that R and D, in that split testing, in, 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 in the, 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 the ability to pivot quickly. I don't have to wait 30 days, 60 days, 90 days to understand if a piece of content or a campaign is working because we're getting that data back so quickly and the technology allows us to reiterate that quickly mm -hmm. that we're able to get to the goals or the KPIs that we're trying to achieve much 
yeah. faster. Yeah. And that's, you hit it on the head. That's, you know, that when we look at, you know, the P&Ls at the end of the day, a, a lot of the money that, that that's, it's not just the customer acquisition. Well, what's going to that customer acquisition is all the failed campaigns. Yeah. And then you scrap the whole campaign and start over. Yeah. Now we can pinpoint, not only is it that campaign, but this part of the campaign that specific piece of content is not working. So we fix that, mm -hmm. not scrap the whole, the whole thing. Yeah. And one of the things that I'm very passionate about is marketing through conversations. Uh, what has excited me most these last couple of years is that audience have, the audiences have bought into authenticity. That sounds odd, <laughs> You know, it sounds weird that we're sitting here saying, okay, it's okay now to just have a conversation or put a piece of marketing content out that is just you speaking very authentic, right? Because you would think that that's how it should have been the whole time, but for whatever reason, it wasn't, you know, but that's where we are now. And so I love the idea of marketing through conversations, companies sitting down with people from their company or from their customers or from other partners and doing like what we're doing right now, just having a conversation about a particular topic, uh, because I think that's where, like you said, you get the most, most authenticity and then it gets fun because you, 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 you clip up the content and then you put it in, I call it the engine, right? I mean, that's the word that I like to use for the work that you do because, you know, when I, in 2019, when I started JRS4 Media, I was going to dental meetings and we were all excited and giddy about, we'd go to a meeting and we would shoot, you know, 18, 20 interviews. And from those interviews, we'd have clips, we'd take photos, we'd live stream, and we would send all of this to the people we were doing stuff for. And then I'd have a conversation with them a month later. And what I would find out is like, how much of that did you use? Uh, we maybe got one or two of those videos sent out. You know, we were too early for whatever reason. I felt like at that time, at least in dentistry, they didn't even know what to do with all the content. And so my struggle was always, okay, great. You know, we can create this so that you have these videos, but if you don't know what to do with them, or in the case of what, what you focus on, you know, take those clips and build a social strategy, uh, you have to have both. I agree a hundred percent. And, and I, I can't tell you how many thousands of photos and videos that I have in my old Dropbox account uh, <laughs> of, of events and, and shared and that never seen the light yeah. of day. Yeah. Um, and you know, I learned two things from, from that. Um, the first thing is, yeah, most folks, as much as they want to genuinely from their bottom of their heart, they want the best for their businesses, yep. right? They want yep. the best for their practices. Yep. So this is yep. not pointing blame, Yep. but to create the content and the amount of content that you would need to create today, it would be a full time. You couldn't be a dentist. You right. wouldn't be able to be a doctor. There's right. no way you are a full time content creator. But speaking to your point, What's really interesting is it's it's coming back and what's really important and where the big brands are investing is user generated content. Mm -hmm. So to your point, yeah, folks want authentic. Yeah. Uh, folks want to really feel like there's a connection to a real person that messes up on video and yeah. it's not a hundred percent perfect because you know what? They look like you and I, yeah. and that's what they're really trying to make that connection. And a lot of brands are missing that for this madman kind of ad agency, super polished, high budget. Um, and, and that's just not working anymore. Yeah. I think we've, you know, we're in a white noise kind of scenario yeah. uh, with that. So when you have the ability to create good user generated content, guided uh, uh, strategically. And, and like you say, you were able to take that content and put it into this engine. One of these campaigns that we put out creates over 400 digital assets. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Th those 20 minutes that they could spend in a conversation talking about their business with you strategically, mm -hmm. we can take that and now create 400 digital assets on high ranking, high traffic websites where your content is being seen. And at the end of the day, driving targeted traffic, right? Our motto, uh, at, at, at our business, it's not about feelings. It's about data. Yeah. Uh, and so what we're really proud of 
is that we're able to say, look, if you follow this recipe, especially with this strategic partnership that you and I are creating, that gets them that content. And when I say that content, I'm being very specific to say that content, not any content, mm -hmm. that content. Yeah. And provide it. Give us that good fuel. Give us that good premium gasoline. Mm -hmm. We're able to take that gasoline and make that race car just fly. Yeah, and I think what's exciting about it is I, I've said this so many times in the years that I've done this, which is I'll do an interview or we'll create a video for somebody. They'll ask me, you know, well, John, how much reach is this going to get? You know, all that stuff. And, and I can honestly say it's something that I have not spent a lot of time on. And I haven't wanted to focus on the data piece because I've learned, William, that in order to make the content good, that's the lane that I needed to focus in. You know, to me, it was about having a good conversation and, and so that when it came through in video, people would be engaged to that. But I've known for a long time that I was missing that piece, right? Because, because, because you know, from a business pers perspective, okay, John, we'll go ahead and, and purchase these videos. Yes, we know that we need them. But A, what are we going to do with them? What's the return on investment? And that's something that, you know, I know that I've needed for a long time. And so when I learned about what you were doing, at, you know, Howling Amplify, I was super excited about it because that's the second piece, right? Yeah. That's a really, really important piece of this. Um, for any company that's going to spend money, because now the other side of it is, you know, people start to hear, okay, we need all this content. And then they go, they spend money and they create it and then nothing comes from it. And that's going to be frustrating as well. So it really is, you, you have to look at both sides of the strategy in order to make it work. Yeah, John. And I've been meaning to say this, you know, you complete me. <laughs> and, and, and I say that in jest, but the, the reality is, you know, I've been doing this probably over 15 years now yeah. uh, uh, in this realm. And uh, to find, again, I, I, can't, I can't stress the importance of getting that content, getting the video content in, in such a way that we can tell a story. Yeah. And I know it's tough. Uh, you know, everybody knows their own business, right? Uh, I can tell you about my business, you can tell, but it's different when you're trying to tell a story to your audience and that's what you really bring to the table. So I'm really excited yeah. about that because that is the missing element between the two. And we're not, listen, this is not that uh, uh, John and William, you, you should use, listen, pull out your iPhone, yeah, start creating absolutely. content, yep. raw, yep. not pretty, post it, yep. period, end of report. Yep. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter what you do. However, at some point, you're going to have to create more content. We're going to have to look at the strategy and you're going to need that additional yeah. help. And that's when you want to find uh, the folks that understand what the goal is and, and are not just going to tell you what you want to hear. You know, uh, I get a lot of clients and sometimes, you know, I have to have some difficult conversations yeah. Yeah. because I want to make sure you get a return on your yeah. investment. However, you, 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 you got to let us do what we do and what we understand best. Yeah, yeah. And so we, you know, we're very particular who we work with because we want to, we want to be on championship teams, yeah. you know, and we want to make sure that we provide the most value uh, that we possibly can. And so we got to make sure that we always start with working with the right partners and it's not for everybody. Yeah. Uh, we're, yeah. we're, we understand that, but for those companies and those agencies that really want that strategy that can get that amazing content that wanted powered out there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, this is something real look at. I want to, I want to throw out an example of some, some recent work that William and I have done just to give you an idea of this. Uh, so it can be overwhelming as you know, to sit down with an organization and for them to think through how are we going to create all this, right? Like how, how do you do it? And one of the things that we did is we were fortunate to have some people that we worked with that are, you know, they, they teach, they already, they, they were here at a seminar with Dr. Scott Luna, right? So Dr. Scott Luna has no shortage of topics that he helps, you know, dentists with. And so we sat down and we thought, okay, could we write down the likes of what would be 52 different ideas? You know, so, so an idea a week. You know, like he might talk about recare in a dental practice. He might talk about marketing your dental practice, whatever the case may be. But, you know, we jotted down those 52 items. So we knew we at least we knew we had something. And that's where it all starts. And then the second step was, OK, let's do a video on the week one topic and a video on the week two topics. And now all of a sudden you go into your year and you feel like you have a game plan of what you're going to capture and you get all that video content. And then you do what you talked with about it and you get it out there. Okay. But what's interesting is that even as organized as you feel there, 
what you have taught me is that, okay, John, this is great. What if in month one and a half or two months, you're putting that out there and for whatever reason, the audiences out there on social media are not engaging in that. It doesn't mean that it's not valuable. It just means that those people at the time that follow are not engaging in it. So then you have to adjust. And you have to, you have to, you know, determine what is working, what's not working. And it's still crazy to me, William, where companies, and I get it, I think we're all creatures of habit. We're passionate about our own business. We think we know what they want. After all, people that create companies often, you know, they should create them for solving a, a, a pain point for a customer. But sometimes we create things because we're passionate about it. And yet, you know, it's all about what they're telling us what they want and what they value. And you brought up a good point, which is it can be hard sometimes for a company to say, well, this is what I want to put out because this is what we do. And then you have to tell them, yeah, but this is what the customer is asking for. Can you give them content based on those pain points? That is a hard thing to do. But when they do it, what happens? Like when, when, when you're able to have them see the light and actually then start to create content around what their audience is engaging in, what happens? The, the transformation is, is night and day. Um, you, you hit, you hit a, a number of, of super important points of, uh, you know, when, when we're creating those strategies like we did, um, it, it was, you know, not just putting down some ideas, but these are well thought ideas that research went into uh, based on best practices, based on past history. Um, and now with the AI tools, it, it gives us even more of a compass, but we're not going to know until we put that out yeah. there. And so what happens a lot of times as the business, like you said, they want to tell us, hey, listen, I, I, if you just knew how good that is and what's missing is they're, they're focused on telling us on, on wanting to tell us on how good that is if you only knew. But you're not approaching me in the right way. It's like going into the club and you have your ruffled shirt and I got my white patent leather uh, uh, dance shoes on and I see you in the corner. I'm doing like this and you, I'm, so, I'm thinking you're responding. You're really not. And I keep just doing this to you because if you only knew. Right. What, what, I, what I was really thinking. Yeah, what I was really thinking. You'd be into me. Right. 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 And so but once we figure it out. Once the company is willing to, and it's, 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 it's stretching, yeah. especially for a yeah. CEO or founder. Yeah. Hey, I've yeah. been this successful to this point, yeah. whatever that looks like. But if we can stretch past that and just be open to try different conversations, what we see and what we experience is dramatic growth, mm -hmm. bottom line to revenues, Bottom line, because that's what I'm looking at. How does it all work as the bottom line? Mm -hmm. Because it's not just SEO. It's not just the social. It's not just the video. Right. It's how is all of this content affecting the profits or yeah. the margins? And so we've been blessed enough and, and we figured it out over the, the decades of, of understanding this. We've been able to grow our businesses 20 to 45 percent year over a year for the last seven, eight years, mm -hmm. all of our clients, that's hard data. Yeah. All right. So one, one other thing I wanted to talk to you about. So you just mentioned the hard data, the ROI. I want to talk a little bit about brand awareness yeah. because especially for an organization that has not created a lot of content, is not super active on social media. It still is fascinating to me, big brands that I know in the industries that I work in, where you'll go and you'll look at some of their channels on social. They don't have a lot of followers, um, which I know that's not always the key, right? I mean, there, there are brands that could have 3,000 followers and, and, are, and, and their followers are super engaging. So that's not always the KPI. But there is this element of brand awareness, and I hear this often. It's like, okay, well, if I start to create this content, and if I don't start to generate business in the first two weeks, then it must not be working. And so I would love to get your thoughts a little bit on sometimes just the commitment that an organization has to make to just initially getting their stuff out there so that like what they're starting to get back or people in the organization start to get back is this thing. I'm seeing you everywhere. Like I didn't see a lot of you everywhere. Now we're like, I go on this channel, I go Instagram, I go Facebook, I go on LinkedIn and I'm seeing you everywhere. Yeah. That's valuable too. Yes. A hundred percent. Um, a, I want to congratulate you because you just had a baby. Oh, and, thank you. And thank so you. I want to congratulate <laughs> you. you. Number one. And I bring that up because I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Um, the, the, since you've had the baby, yeah. uh, th does your baby like to eat? Yes. And, and, and does it eat every day? 
Yeah, every day she eats. Every yeah. day. Every day. Yeah. Every single day. Yeah. Yeah. What happens if she 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 doesn't eat? Well, a couple things. Um, it's not going to be good in the household because yeah. she's not going to be happy. Sure. You know. Yeah. And uh, I think we know the answer to that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and 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 I don't want to you know. But what happens if you never fed her? Yeah. That would be terrible. Other things, handcuffs, Other, and handcuffs, she would not be all good. kinds. Of, exactly. <laughs> Why do we think our businesses are any different? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I always want to understand where, where, where whoever we're going to partner with, because I don't like to consider our, myself as a contractor. I, I want to partner with you. I want to come alongside of you to, to support you in achieving mm -hmm. those goals the very best way I know how. Mm -hmm. But I want to make sure that we have the same ideas and the same kind of strategy to make sure I'm the right person right, to right, help you. Right. And so what I see often enough is that um, a lot of business owners, they are are set in, in what they understand and what they know. They're not willing uh, uh, to stretch any further than, than their comfort zone. And they have this, this, this instant gratification. I don't know if it's because of fear of the commitment mm -hmm. to the investment, mm -hmm. um, uh, fear of, of something that may not work. Mm -hmm. So either they do one of two things. They don't do it at all because it may not work. Right. Which to me doesn't make sense. It's like saying, you know, marketing and, and these things, this is the, the oxygen to a business. So you're going to suffocate your business mm -hmm. and not commit to your business. You're not going to feed your child after you just gave birth to this yeah. child. Yep. You're not going to feed it. Um, and so what happens is they, they don't do anything or they start siloing it. Well, I'm going to try this Facebook guy for two weeks or I'm going to start this for three weeks. And so automatically, if a business owner is coming in with, hey, what results are you going to show me in 90 days? We're already on the wrong page together because this is not about what I can show you in 30, 60, 90 days. Yes, it's about results. I'm all about results. But it has to be first to the commitment that we both understand that there's a commitment financial and otherwise mm -hmm. because it's not just financial. Right, right. It's time. It's, it's time also. Yeah, You're yeah. going to have to put some time yeah, into this. Yeah. We're going to help you. That's the hardest thing, right? And I, I, I want you to finish your point. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I mean, you said something very strong there. Like that's the hardest thing that I share with people is that to constantly create content, like it takes probably five, 10 times more time than you would ever imagine. You know, like it is, a, and that's, I think that's where a lot of people kind of peter out, right? Like they get excited. They do a little bit, they're out there. And then it's like 40 days later, they're like, oh, we need, oh man, we got to create, keep, keep creating things. Yeah. It never ends. Okay. So exactly. yeah, I just wanted it's to a, say yeah, that. No, you're hundred percent right. The time involved. And again, in today's day and age, the amount of content that you have to put out there to yeah. be competitive. So we got to first work on the mindset that this is a commitment yeah. uh, and time and, and resources. And, and you got to trust your partner that, that we, we're we professional enough and we've been doing this long enough to know that if something's not working, we understand we're going to pivot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No need to tell me that this is not right. working. Right. We're going to pivot and we all got to be willing to pivot. And how cool is it? Like I think back to the day, you probably know this more than I do, where the amount of money and time and effort that would go into maybe creating like a, like a marketing catalog of all your products that like, then you would mass produce that catalog, 1000, 10,000, 20,000 copies. <laughs> right. And if anything was wrong in that baby, right. And then you got all of those printed, like everything that went into that. And so I understand sometimes the fear of this old school way of thinking of like, well, you know, I don't know. I don't want to commit to this. I understand the origin of where that comes from. But the exciting thing is to your point, like, listen, you create something and if it doesn't work, like, you know, you scrap it, you go to the next, Yeah, you know? And, and, and that's, I think that's an exciting thing and it should lend people the confidence to know that like stuff comes and goes. Uh, and you know, William and I want to do a little test here. So Michael, how, how long have we been speaking? You got a clock on there? 29 minutes. All right, 29 minutes. So do you want to take a guess from just this conversation, 30-minute conversation, of how many pieces of content we're going to be able to produce from this? Tell you what, let's let let's 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 pop this up a notch, all right? All right. I want the audience to guess. Okay, okay. How many pieces of gotcha. content gotcha. they think that we can generate yes, yes. out of this. And I'll and I'm gonna do what? I'm going to give away a $1,000 prize okay. to whoever 
gets it right on the money. The first one, because it's gonna, it has to be timed. Because right. then if I get right. ten people, the right. first person that gets the right number, yeah, I'll give them a thousand dollars. Okay, so let's distinguish because you know if you think about this, like a piece of content is what? Like, do we we want to determine that? Let, let's determine that maybe as a so that there's a set structure, a, a sixty second clip. What do you think? So, you know, in today's day and age, you know, the 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 length of a video is yeah. going to vary. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. So it's really about repurposing that content to get every drop that you can out of it. Because that's the key. What we're doing right now, this is part of the secret sauce. This right. is part of the 14 right. herbs and right. spices that right. KFC right. has. Right. Right. So... Go ahead and, and let them guess. Mm -hmm. We're going to go and content is something that we can display, something we can push out yeah. digitally. Yeah. Here is this is and we can link to it. I can produce a link to that's a piece of content for yeah. us. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what's exciting, right? Is just sitting down, having a conversation about something that we're excited about and then being able to produce things, you know, from that. And and again, let, let let's say that in 30 minutes like from a video perspective, we created 45 pieces of content, things that you said, things that I said, I would have you, yep. you know, and give people perspective, right? So we're excited about this partnership of how we're going to help together with your expertise and, and, and what I can help people with. Uh, but 45 pieces of content, you know, we could use for how long? Oh, that's a loaded question, John. <laughs> oh, boy. So, listen, um, you know, I, I like taking things in phases with, with clients. Um, you know, the first thing that we, that I think you and I have experienced together is on the brands we're working with is first we got to get to consistency. Yes. yes. Right. We went through that phase. Hey, yes. let's just get to posting every yes. day. Yes. Uh, then we started massaging it because we had to get the message on brand and, and, and how, and that's just been a, 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 a process. And we're right now just getting into two to three pieces of content per day. Now, if you take what Gary V mm -hmm. uh, suggests, they're creating upwards of 60 plus pieces of content per day. And, and this kind of, I, I want to segue back kind of to, to what you mentioned about, you know, is it about followers and likes? That's the surface level thing. Yeah. I understand the yeah. like, and, but yep. what a lot of folks don't pay attention to, if you look at that same post, look at how many impressions yeah. yep. you're getting. Yep. 200 impressions, yep. 300. These are billboards, folks. Yes, yes. These are digital billboards. billboards yep. And you're getting hundreds of impressions. Yep. Hundreds of impressions. Yeah. All we got to do is figure out how to dial in that message to yep. your audience, providing them great digital assets mm -hmm. to, to learn from and view and engage with. And that's the first KPI I like. Yeah. focusing on look how many impressions and what you're going to see you're getting thousands if not hundreds of thousands of impressions yeah and those impressions leads to likes and comments and requests for information speaking about the data and science so in 2004 uh is when i started in dentistry i sold uh dental hand pieces and i covered all of california and las vegas and uh, back, social media was not a thing in 2004. I mean, it was just on the brink, right? Yeah. And so we had a formula. That formula would be, you know, if I went to 20 dental practices a day and I shared with them, you know, information about the hand pieces, I would get, you know, six offices that would be interested and maybe one or two that would buy, right? That was from either me physically visiting the office, calling the office, dropping off a piece of information to the office, whatever the case may be. Now I think about it. And at that time, you know, in the case of the dental industry, dentists were not scrolling through on their phone, you know, the, 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 the pages that they followed. So like in many regards, that's what a sales team did. Yeah. Now I think about a dentist and I think about the extra time that they have in their day, in the morning, in the afternoon, they take a break, in the evening or whatever. And so they're scrolling through their social channels. That's right. And to your point about the billboards, right? I mean, think about how this is changing sales forces for organizations. 
Meaning that if you had the ability as a company to be able to get your message out, knowing that your audience, you don't always know like where they're looking, but like, that's what you do, right? Like who's looking, where are they looking? What platforms, what time of the day, all that science is there, right? I mean, if, if somebody would told me back then, John, if you would go to your, your dental practices at eight 30 in the morning versus at two 30, you'd have a better chance of converting. Yeah. That's the information that you have, except in this new world. Yeah, and and I, I remember those those door knocking days, right? Yeah, and and it's good for the soul. Good, good for the soul, William. Let's say I think it's a rite of passage. Okay, <laughs> it's I good think for the soul. It's a rite of passage, and what's really interesting with the technology that we have today, um, it's it's not only that you're knocking at your uh, at their door. But you're literally in your PJs with them, right next to them in bed while they're flipping <laughs> through the channels. Yeah. Because that's how closely we yeah. can get to them. And we know that their favorite flip-flops are the furry pink yep. ones. Yep. And so by having that information and understanding that, it's it's – drastically transforming a lot of industries. For instance, I worked with a, 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 an outfit that has 60 regional offices that sold solar. Uh, and, and initially solar is, is door knocking and door knocking. Can I tell you that we've implemented campaigns with them that now what we're able to generate in leads and sales virtually uh, has uh, has already outdone what they can possibly do door Knocking to door doors, yeah. with less yeah people yeah so bigger margin so that's exactly yeah. what's happening now we know who is looking at what we understand that we know what questions are asking and what we're doing is we're delivering that content mm -hmm. for the information they're asking for yeah well all right so as we wrap i you know i want to share a couple of things that get me really excited about the work that i do and then would love to have you do the same and, and i think i think we close this out so i was just thinking about uh, today I'm here uh, and uh, been interviewing some companies that are at this seminar that we're at. And I'm like a little kid when I'm able to interview them, ask them questions, very conversational in nature, have them talk about their business, what they're doing, like how they're helping their customers. We get it on video, you know, we put it out on social media and I get to watch it. They get to watch it. I get so excited about that. Like, it's like I get excited for, for whatever it's worth. If there's one, you know, customer that's in their field that sees that, that was like, wow, I didn't know that company was doing this, or I didn't know that this company had this available, you know, like that's, that's what drives me. And that's what I'm so excited about to continue to do this work so that we can showcase companies and help them move into this new day and age of creating those multiple billboards. What about you? You know, I'm 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 really excited to 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 be able to provide uh, uh, this service for the business owner to see real results and and gain confidence again in what's possible. Uh, I, I feel a, a lot of business owners have been beat down, uh, you know, uh, led astray, false promises, and, and that's why I'm so focused on sticking to the core of what's measurable and where we know we can provide real impact, life-changing things for business owners, and that's what wakes me up in the morning. Yeah, I love that. So listen, everybody. Uh, if you are a company out there and you need some solutions, even just, you know, discovery calls on, on, on a, you know, content strategy, you know, very, very excited to help and, and, and do that at JRS4 Media. And of course, Howling Amplify, uh, William and his team, uh, we're excited to, to partner with them as well and um, see if we continue to help uh, companies grow. That's the name of the game. All right. Well, thanks, Ben. It's been awesome. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it.